I'm speaking. Stone loves that line. She's been a huge fan of that line. Every time she gets on stage, whether it's against Pence, whether she's in a crowd, some people are yelling. She loves to do the, the, the I'm speaking bit. Now, this will be denied her because of the muted microphone thing in the debate tomorrow night, but she loves it. She uses it all the time. Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. I have to I'm speaking. In. Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. Well, wait, wait. I'm speaking. It'd be important if you said the truth. Mr. Yes. Vice President, I'm Please. speaking. Please. I'm speaking. Okay. If you don't mind letting me finish, we can Please. then have a conversation. Okay? Please. Okay. Non-answer. Try to answer you the now. American people deserve a straight answer. <laughs> I will not sit here and be lectured by the Vice President. Oh, I'm speaking. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm about to. I will not be lectured by the Vice President. Anyway, I am curious why that's her go-to line. That has me curious because it, it obviously is something. They poll test everything. It's been poll tested. They landed on that line and they love it. But does it work on anybody? Joining me now, a former Democrat, now a wonderful culture, health, and policy writer, friend of the show, Jennifer Gallardi. Okay, Jennifer. Now, obviously, all that's nails on a chalkboard to me that I'm speaking bullcrap, but I know these people aren't speaking to me. Does that work on people? And if so, why? Jesse, are you going to let me speak, please? Are you done? <laughs> <laughs> please, go ahead, please. <laughs> that was probably the shortest intro I've ever gotten, actually. Um, you know, I think most people already know who they're voting for. I don't think any of this stuff is swaying people either way. We've talked about this um, so many times on your show before. You know, she kind of has the same thing over and over again, but I think people know who they're gonna vote for and I'm not sure the debate will make much of a difference. It's not like she's hiding anything, like Joe Biden and all his shills were hiding his dementia, you know, for Lord knows how long. She's already proven she's incompetent and really can't take the pressure of live interviews, debates or interactions. People are either going to vote for her, they're either going to see that, or they just don't care. I think they don't care, right? They've got Trump derangement syndrome. Majority of them are single issue voters, whether it's abortion or Gaza or some other issue based in pure emotion um, and are too easily swayed by non-rational arguments. So the I'm speaking thing is a non-rational thing because it doesn't even speak to policy, right? And I, like I said, I don't think a lot of them care. A majority of the Democrat voters, which are single women, don't care. They just hear abortion and they go off the handle. Um, maybe she'll have such a poor showing that it might sway a handful of voters and we can hope that's enough, but she really needs to blow it like Biden, kind of like bend it like Beckham. I mean, at this point, she really needs to blow it. Um, I think to move the needle a great bit, we see it's kind of neck and neck and got all these polls and everything, but I'm not sure where the people actually sit. And at this point, I think people are watching the debate for sport or entertainment, right? Like who'll make the first cut or who'll throw that like fatal jab. And we're waiting for the social media snippet that will go viral thinking that will change people's minds. But I really think people are already set where they are. Um, one thing I'd like to see Trump do is somehow take her by surprise, hit a topic she's unprepared for. He can't control the questions. And obviously the media is going to spoon feed things about border crime and the economy, which are all very important. But we've heard the, um, the candidates talk about these ad nauseum and they're things that she expects. So somehow she'll be slightly prepared for them. But I think if Trump can get in some talking points that seem to unify America, like we witnessed when RFKJ came on stage at his rally in Arizona, um, I mean, that would, they went off the charts, things about health, right? The things that RFKJ has been talking about, unity, and take some cues from his campaign. Um, you know, I felt such joy and optimism when I saw those two together. And I think the right needs to use some of that emotional momentum that they've built up, that we sometimes forget that people are swayed by the story and by emotion. Um, I read an article from one of RFKJ's staffers about being how being at that rally was so uplifting. He felt so welcomed. Everybody was excited. Um, he said everybody was kind, and they're like, "We've been going for RF. We've been hoping he'd be he'd join." And and they're really positive. Um, the same with the Tucker tour. I had a friend that was in the VIP room working it when uh, he went on stage with Ramaswamy and RFKJ, who was un uh, unexpected at that at that event. 
And she said it was just off the charts. It was like bigger than a rock concert, that people were just so uplifted and optimistic. And then I look at some social media feeds from people in my past, like the old kind of progressive world, and they're living a totally different life. They're not seeing any of this. You know, they're worried about gays having the right to marry and use women women's bodies for baby making. And they've told, been told Trump will roll all this back. So I think if Trump can bring in some of the health stuff, some of the unifying things and, and make it seem like we're not all a bunch of like racists that they tell everybody we are, um, but it is kind of coming down to this civil war type mentality. I think one side thinks certain practice practices are morally indefensible and it's which vision of America is going to move forward. Jennifer, you say that Dome has to blow it. You know, Kamala Harris has to get up there and blow it in some way for it to, to move the meter. And granted, given her history, she certainly could. But what would Trump do to blow it with maybe the undecided voter who's watching? What would be a mistake if he, if he goes, what, what's he have to do to really make a mistake with someone who's maybe you're a flimsy dem, kind of mad about the price of eggs, but he can really step on it and go too far with what? Well, I think we've seen from the past debate that the, um, the mics turned off when they're not speaking is helpful to Trump. It restrains him, it controls him. And most people who hate Trump hate him because of his personality, hate him because of his off color comments, right? So I think if he can do what he did in the debate with Biden, which is maintain composure, stick to the issues, um, use that unifying theme that RFKJ brings to the party, um, bring in some of those people that, I mean, there were a lot of lefties in, um, and, and right, he's left and right. You know, I, I kind of do fall somewhere in the middle, um, even though the left would probably, you know, automatically say I'm some right wing fascist, but there's some living in California. I, I appreciate the environment. I'm, I'm kind of an RFKJ person when it comes to environment and health. Um, so I think if he can just keep himself metered, keep with the unifying thing, a friend of mine says to me that he thinks everyone is worn out by Trump and all of the theater. And I agree, but I'd say we're all worn out by all of it. And I know we just want to kind of get it over with and go on to deal with the impending chaos because you know, no matter who wins, it's going to be insane. The losing side will claim the election was stolen no matter what. And the left is going to keep screaming Russia, 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 which like I think you've already said in some of your episodes, they've already been doing. Um, and I'll just reiterate what I said to you in my first episode with you, Jesse, is that I think this country has a cancer. And I'm not saying it's terminal, but it a Trump victory will only kind of be a form of radiation. So as soon as we stop applying pressure, it's gonna take over. The left, the progressive movement will take over. And so many people have already caved to these kind of distorted norms and ideas. Some are even allowing kids to chop off their genitalia. I mean, it. It, a lot of people disagree with that, but how have we even let it get this far? So I think our optimism and hope really has to lie in the fact that the past four or five years has exposed a lot about who people are. And now we can decide who we wanna build communities and relationships and our families with. And you know, when this election is over, it doesn't matter. We'll keep fighting for what's true and good and right and beautiful. And we just have to create that for ourselves. I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is. And I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.